Some characters fly around in vehicles that look like their head. Other characters have ships that define their visual identity. Other characters fly around in vehicles that look like their head. Honestly, I'm not really getting over this. Clothes make the man, and props, companions, even environments supplement and say something about characters, and vehicles are no exception. Let's get into the mentality behind designing iconic vehicles from Star Wars, Miyazaki, and more, and how to design vehicles for characters of your own. One of the most notable aspects of ships and vehicles from the Star Wars galaxy, especially the original trilogy, is just how purposefully mundane they are. And I'm not making any grand discoveries here. Luke's first impression of the Millennium Falcon is that it's a piece of junk. And yet at the time, this was a big change from other ships in science fiction and fantasy. Many of them carried the simplistic, smooth, and shiny alien look, like the saucer in The Day the Earth Stood Still, or even the ships from Buck Rogers. One thing that this does is contribute to the immersion of both the ship and the character, and the larger story overall. The more lived in and mundane something like a vehicle seems, the more it's a part of everyday life. The amount of real life references that Star Wars vehicles pull from, like fighter planes and the like, not only make them feel familiar, but the same ergonomics that make these vehicles useful to humans in real life are translated into this fictional world. There's three elements that I think are important to vehicle design, especially in relation to characters, and we'll hit on all three of them throughout this video. The first is identity. What does use of this vehicle say explicitly or implicitly about the character? The second is utility. What is the function and purpose of the vehicle? What is it capable of? And then the third thing is the visual read. How easy it is to understand at a glance or from far away, the shapes and things like that. Doug Chiang, the head of creative direction for Lucasfilm, likes to talk about the simplicity of the bulk of Star Wars vehicles designs. A TIE fighter from the front is an H with a clear spot for a pilot, and then it's a hexagon from the side. The iconic sound instills dread, and quickly the idea of just how expendable these poor ships are becomes apparent. For as fierce as an individual pilot might be, the Empire at large doesn't mind simply throwing bodies at a problem. Identity, visual read, and utility. Now here's an example that most can probably appreciate right now. The most recent addition to the Star Wars vehicle canon has to be the Mandalorian's ship, the Razorcrest. Like most bounty hunter ships in the Star Wars universe, it hits squarely in the middle of flashy and mundane. The utility for most of these characters far outweighs the intimidation factor. And thinking about real life and the way that people relate to vehicles, tons of people love to salivate over lavish sports cars, and far, far fewer people, unless they're Maersk heads or Ocean Liner Boys, Container Gang, I don't know, aren't going to have as much of an appreciation for big industrial container ships. Now the Razor Crest has all of the elements of a classic Star Wars ship. It has the shapes reminiscent of old planes. It feels like something of a successor to the Republic gunships from the Clone Wars, which is the time period that the ship was made in universe. And the utility of the ship allows for extra cargo, passengers, areas where our characters can interact on board. But it also has what I can maybe posit is a really strong statement about the characters on board. Now think for a second about a hotshot guy who loves sports cars or is a prime candidate for that midlife crisis car purchase, but he has a family and he has to sell it. The sports car, not the kids. And instead he gets a minivan. Now the Razor Crest, and maybe I'm crazy, reads like a flashy sports car fighter for the first top third of the vessel, with minivan essence sort of dripping down its lower two thirds. And while he's had the Razor Crest for longer, the Mandalorian's newfound relationship with the child makes for a perfect sports car minivan grafting metaphor, a character who has taken on additional passengers of family. Now tell me there aren't guys in minivans running stop signs on the way to dropping their kids off of school, absolutely blasting the Mandalorian's theme song. You know they're out there. I mean, alternatively, the Mandalorian could be flying around in a ship shaped like his helmet. A few other things that Star Wars does, specific shape motifs are consistent across entire factions. For example, the Empire's hard edges and sharp triangular shape language is contrasted by the Rebellion's 
round and barrel shapes of the Tantive IV, the Mon Calamari cruisers, and medical frigates. You could view it simply as round shapes equals good guys, angular equals bad guys, but I think more accurately it reflects the underdog versus the dominant threat. In the prequels, that's the Separatist armies, which have plenty of organic and streamlined shapes, while the Republic carries the predecessor designs to what will eventually be the Empire. We also get that struggle between freedom and order that's very present in square shapes versus round shapes. Adapting elements from things that are not machinery, like creatures, is a well-trodden aspect of Star Wars design. It's effective too. The foreboding or main traits of a creature can be read in a vehicle's design and help contribute to that sense of danger on our visual read. Outside of Star Wars, we see themes and ideas being conveyed through the vehicles that Miyazaki employs in his visual storytelling. His lifelong love of planes crops up throughout his work. Not only does flight provide an exhilarating feeling of freedom, but in films like The Wind Rises, a double-edged sword presents itself as a character's love for planes and making them easily becomes a tool for warfare. Jokes about Samus's gunship aside, I think it's a fantastic design, and actually, looking to another Nintendo franchise for one of my favorite ships is the SS Drake from Pikmin 3. This is clearly a ship that maintains the same shape and design language as the characters in the game. Everything is sort of top-heavy because our top-down perspective favors what we see up top first, and the amount of detail on the ship perfectly blends what should be an intricately built piece of machinery for very tiny people and the fact that it's a very tiny ship. So as you design vehicles for your own characters and stories, it's helpful to consider what does a vehicle mean for your character? Does it bring freedom? Does it work smoothly? Does it need constant maintenance? What does your character's choice of vehicle mean for them? So let's take some of the things that we talked about into account as we attempt to make an original ship design. Now I have a spare character here that's meant to leave the atmosphere, but no vessel to do so. So before I start making endless silhouettes of ship shapes, I want to keep identity and utility in mind. Now as far as this character is concerned, she is absolutely a loner, she is happy, at least at first, to have some time to herself, a planet away from any other people. She also has an adventurous and pioneering demeanor for her to be the absolute first person that she knows of to successfully enter space, and she should be eager to explore. For utility, we want this ship to have enough size for a living space inside, a space apartment, and we want it to look like leaving the atmosphere was hard for it to do. We also want it to maybe look like Laven's head. Alright, maybe not that. Something that might come up pretty quickly as you start designing vehicles of your own is the idea and concept of scale. How big exactly are the ships you're making, and how do you convey that they're, perhaps, much larger than just a single person? Well, one thing that's really helpful is adding ergonomic detail markers. So for example, a ladder that's really tiny on the side of a ship leading to a door that is also very tiny obviously makes us think that this is a very large vessel. Overall, pipes, panels, rivets, screws, greebling in general gives us the idea of at least how detailed the outer surface of something is, and that allows us to, in our mind, relate it to the size of something we're familiar with. If you haven't seen the name of the channel at this point, you'll know that vehicle design is not something I have a ton of experience with, so likely, in order for me to really get something I'm happy with, I'll have to revisit this process a couple of times. But as far as a first iteration, I feel like I captured something that hits all of the marks as far as Laven is concerned, and this is something I'm happy with. You know, we're making new videos every week here on Character Design Forge. My course, Learn Character Design, is over 18 hours of video learning that you can find at learncharacterdesign.com. Patreon is a great way to support this channel and get something called Biko's Backpack in return over at patreon.com slash bageldenizen. And if you aren't already following on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, or TikTok, it's at bageldenizen on all of those platforms. Thanks so much for watching, and have fun creating.